In this video, we're going to be looking at all things Adele. What's happened to the 15-time Grammy Award winner? Could all the trauma from her childhood be impacting her career? And with all the new heartbreak that she's recently suffered, are there any clues about when we'll next hear from her? Let's rewind back to the 2017 Grammy Awards, a night where Adele absolutely stole the show and walked away with five Grammys, including three of the big four, Song of the Year, Record of the Year, and Album of the Year. The last time someone achieved that was in 2012, and it was Adele. <laughs> But the 2017 award ceremony was memorable for another reason too. Not only did she steal the show for her musical talents, during her acceptance speech, she finally broke the news of her secret marriage to charity CEO Simon Konecki. Adele and Simon had been together for six years, having first been introduced by none other than Ed Sheeran back in 2011. At the time, Adele described it as love at first sight. Quote, when I met Simon, I knew something was going to happen, she said. And indeed, something did happen, because within a year of meeting, the pair welcomed their son to the world. Their son's name? Well, his name was a closely guarded secret. The world didn't learn that he was actually called Angelo until the year after his birth in 2013. And for once, it seemed like things were finally working out in the love department for Adele. It really felt like she'd finally have her happy ending and she'd finally have the family she'd always dreamed of. Simon, who is 14 years older than Adele, seems like a really nice guy. He's the co-founder of a water company and he's also left a high-flying career in finance to start a water charity, helping disadvantaged communities to get access to clean drinking water. And judging by all of the photos of Adele and Simon together, it looked like the pair were really happy. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out to be the case. In fact, in an announcement that caught everyone completely off guard, within two years of tying the knot, Adele and Simon announced that they were getting divorced. So why the split? Well, as you saw from how guarded Adele had been with the wedding announcement in the first place, and also with Angelo's name, she likes to keep private matters private especially when they relate to her family. And you can respect that, right? I mean, just because she's in the public eye and she often sings about some of her life experiences, that doesn't necessarily grant us the access to know every aspect of her personal life. And so it's no real surprise that very few details about her divorce from Simon have actually come to light. All we do know is that apparently the two of them just drifted apart and that the quote, romantic love was no longer there. But look, what's nice about that whole situation is the pair have remained on really good terms, and unlike some high-profile divorces, this one hasn't got messy. Don't forget, when they married in 2016, they didn't sign a prenup, which meant had he wanted to, Simon could have dragged things through the courts and may even have been entitled to a large chunk of Adele's estimated $190 million fortune. Thankfully, it didn't come to that. The pair are actually so close that not only do they share joint custody of their son, Angelo, but they even live on the same street. And I guess to many, that might sound strange, living so close to their ex. But when you learn about Adele's tragic childhood and the relationship she had with her own father, it all starts to make a lot more sense. You see, Adele had a very unhappy childhood. In fact, she's admitted that she suffered from childhood depression, and to this day, she continues to see a therapist regularly. Her father, Mark Evans, abandoned her and her mum when she was still a toddler, and while we hear about Adele's romantic heartbreaks through her music, the truth is, the first man to truly hurt her was her own dad, Mark. One of the few times she's spoken about Mark in public was at the 2017 Grammy Awards, where she left everyone in no doubt that she loved her manager more than she loved her father. And I love you like you're my dad. I love you so, so much. I don't love my dad, that's the thing, but that doesn't mean a lot, but I love you like I would. I love you like I would love my dad. You see, Mark was a severe alcoholic. In an interview with The Sun newspaper, he admitted to drinking two litres of vodka and seven or eight pints of beer a day. 
and it's this toxic behaviour that led to Adele cutting all contact with him when she was just 10 years old. Later, after she found fame, the pair did briefly reconcile, trying to form a friendship, but again, sadly, that friendship didn't last long. And after Mark betrayed Adele by selling photos and also selling stories of her to the media, she once again cut him out of her life, this time for good. Quote, I never knew my dad, he has no right to talk about me, is what she told Rolling Stone about the incident. Quote, he will never hear from me again because there is nothing that would upset me more than my dad being bribed by the press, she said at the time. The tragic part about all of this is even if she wanted to, their relationship can now never be mended. Mark passed away in 2021. And so, given her experiences with her own father, it goes a long way into explaining why Adele is so keen to remain friendly with Simon to ensure that her son Angelo won't have to go through the same heartbreak of not having a father in his life. And get this, it's not just the two houses on the same street that the family own. In fact, at this rate, Adele might wind up buying the whole neighbourhood. You see, while us mere mortals might be happy with two or three bedrooms, Adele's treated herself to not one house, not two houses, but three incredible mansions right next to each other, costing a staggering $30 million. If we include Simon's home too, that's four houses on the same street. Back in 2016, while they were still married, Adele, Simon and little Angelo relocated from the UK to Beverly Hills. At the time, the official line was that the move was meant to help her with her career. And of course, moving to a new country can definitely add stress to a relationship. It's not easy having to uproot and adjust to a whole new life, like different social circles, new friends, new neighbours, new passions, new hobbies. But well, when you're a global superstar, that settling in process is a little bit easier, especially when you surround yourself with a tight social circle. As you might expect, in a neighbourhood where houses cost $10 million a pop, the celebrities living nearby read like a who's who of the Hollywood A-list, including the likes of Katy Perry, Jennifer Lawrence, Cameron Diaz, and of course close friend Nicole Ritchie. Other stars that Adele's been spending time with include the likes of Rihanna, Lady Gaga, Drake, Taylor Swift, Ellen, and fellow Brits Harry Styles, James Corden, and Elton John, to name but a few. But amongst all her new friends, the friendship that Adele cherishes the most is that with Beyonce. I mean, for years, Adele has made no secret of her love for Queen Bee. My artist of my life is Beyonce in this album for me. The Lemonade album was just so monumental, Beyonce, it was so monumental. All us artists here, we f***ing adore you. You are our light and I love you. I always have and I always will. Going from fangirl to best friends, Adele and Beyonce's friendship has only grown stronger since Adele's move to the States. In fact, Beyonce's also had a part to play with Adele's dramatic weight loss. Let me explain. Since her divorce, Adele has lost a reported seven stone or 98 pounds. But what many don't realise is Beyonce was apparently instrumental in helping Adele to shed those pounds. Beyonce has apparently helped her with fitness tips and by giving her lots of support and guidance with lifestyle changes. Of course, support and guidance mean nothing if you don't stick to a diet. And the diet plan that Adele's been following is called the Cert Food Diet, which apparently allows you to eat chocolate and drink wine and still lose the pounds. As you might expect, it's exploded in popularity after people saw just how successful Adele has been with it. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the specifics of the Cert Food Diet, I'll include a link to a video from a nutrition expert in my description below, so check that out. Sadly, while many people have praised Adele for her weight loss, not everyone's been quite so happy. Some have actually gone as far as to criticise her recent photos, claiming that she's using Photoshop and also blaming her for fueling unhealthy and unrealistic expectations of body image. The main criticism seems to be that, as a previously fuller figured lady, Adele was a refreshing change from the picture perfect celebrities that we're so often used to seeing on TV and in magazines. After all, Adele herself was even quoted as saying, quote, I make music for ears, not eyes. 
Some claim that it's that girl next door image, the one that wasn't pixel perfect and that didn't seem artificial, that helped her to win the hearts of fans around the world. With that said, look, you can't help but be inspired by her for transforming her body. If that's what she wanted to do, then I don't think anyone has the right to criticise her for what she does to her own body. And let's not forget that all this scrutiny and analysis of her body weight can't be easy for Adele, especially as we know that she already deals with depression. To her credit, she seems to have dealt with it remarkably well, and she's tackled the topic with humour. And I know I look really, really different since you last saw me, but actually, because of all the COVID restrictions and the travel bans, I had to travel light and only bring half of me. And this is the half that I chose. And her new look has clearly given her a newfound confidence when it comes to her love life. Once again, Beyonce may have had a role to play there too. Let me explain. Recently, Adele has been seen getting cosy with sports agent Rich Paul. Rich Paul represents numerous NBA and NFL players, including LeBron James. So where's the link with Beyonce? Well, Rich is actually one of Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z's closest friends. See the link there? Rich and Adele certainly appear to be getting close, and although nothing has yet been officially confirmed, at least not at the time of recording this video, it's clear that they're spending more and more time together publicly, and they seem very comfortable in each other's company. One man that might not be too happy to see this budding romance is Adele's friend, UK grime artist Skepta. Both Adele and Skepta come from the same part of North London, Tottenham, and since her divorce, there's been lots of rumours that the two might have had a thing. In the past, the rapper Skepta apparently dated supermodel Naomi Campbell, and E! Online reports that Adele and Skepta did apparently, quote, go on dates from time to time, and that, quote, there's chemistry there. Now, I mean, look, one look at Skepta and Rich Paul, and one look at her ex-husband Simon, you can't help but notice that her apparent choice in men seems very different after her divorce. Could Adele's dating life be benefiting from a newfound confidence following her weight loss? What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Whatever the truth is, Skepta, Rich Paul and indeed her ex Simon all better watch how they treat Adele or they might end up being exposed in one of her future songs. You see, Adele has a history of using her love life and her heartbreak as inspiration for her music. And that's been the case with a cheating boyfriend who inspired her album 19, as well as a different ex dubbed Mr. 21, who broke her heart and led to her writing her award-winning album 21. Songs like Someone Like You, Rolling in the Deep, Rumor Has It, plus a whole bunch more were all inspired by her heartbreak and her experiences post-separation. But it's not just her love life that serves as the basis for her inspiration. The song that led to Adele being discovered when her friend uploaded it to the site MySpace was Hometown Glory, and that also has a funny story behind it. So Hometown Glory was apparently written in 10 minutes, and it was inspired by Adele's experience on a drunken night out in London. An intoxicated Adele apparently was stumbling home when a concerned French lady approached her and asked if she could help. Adele's response? Nah love, this is my hometown. It's this experience that gave birth to the chorus, is there anything I can do for you dear? Is there anyone I could call? No and thank you please madame, I ain't lost, just wondering. And with her unique ability to turn experiences like this, a random drunken stroll in London, into one of the most incredible songs, well, I can't wait to hear what she's got in store for us with her new album. Fans have been waiting since 2015 for Adele's new album and she's recently confirmed we might not have to wait too much longer. Work is underway and given all of her celebrity pals and how much love so many great singers have for Adele, I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two big names feature on the album, including perhaps BFF Beyonce. Who knows? What we can say for sure is, given all that she's lived through these last few years, I'm sure she's got a lot of experiences to draw inspiration from. If you enjoyed this video, please show your support by taking two seconds to hit that like button and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe for lots more videos just like this. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos that are on screen now. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next video.